But unlike Walton's well-governed angler, my contemplation was brief. My thoughts were on the big trout in the pool. At last, I reached it. And there by the fallen willow was a ring in the water. The trout was still there and feeding. It didn't take long to find the cause of the trout's activity. A mayfly hatch was on. I had only one fly that resembled the insect, a ginger cahill. But it takes only one, if it's the right one, and properly placed. wasn't another fly in the whole box that looked anything like the mayflies hatching on the water. So first, I tried a fan wing coachman. Then I tied on a goofus bug. Then a spider. Half a dozen flies later, I hadn't had a rise. Yet there was the trout, still feeding on the little mayflies. There was nothing left to do but tie a fly to match them. I clamped a number 12 hook in my fly tying vise and tied on a wisp of hackle for the tail. Then some mandarin feathers for the wings. I finished the fly with several turns of yarn and tied it off. It turned out better than I had expected. Now I took care to watch my back cast. I kept the line in the air until I could drop the fly just upstream of the trout. It was the right fly in the right place.
I don't know how long I sat there reflecting on the way of a trout. I thought of the thousands of eggs this trout might yet spawn and the great fish like herself that would be her offspring. It occurred to me that all of its enemies except one must destroy the trout to live. Only man has an alternative. And I let her slip away back to her pool. <laughs>